Stefan, I did read Practical Anarchy, and the details that you have of the DROs are descriptive, and they, they mention that the representative of the DROs would simply introduce the impending ostracism that, uh, that would be occurring um, if somebody did not abide by the authoritarian rule of the DRO. Um, but you had mentioned uh, in the video, I'll once again point to the link of a dated video of yours where you simply skirt the problems with the DRO. Okay, um, and so you haven't dealt with these uh, as of yet. Now, um, I did read Practical Anarchy. Uh, Nate, by the way, you left a funny-ass comment down there on my last video. Uh, Universal. Uh, UPB is universally preferable behavior, and this is the foundation of your philosophy uh, in which you then subsequently apply DROs, disagreement resolution organizations, as a theoretical application which could be used if anarcho-capitalism was to ever take hold. Uh, in one of your videos, uh, and check out the link, you note the problems with the DROs, and instead of delving into these problems, you simply sidestep them and move on to the next topic. So this lack of dealing with the problems with your DROs in your video uh, in Practical Anarchy, the book justifies your prescript uh, or your postscript with the word theory. And note your comment in my last video where you, you add this as a, a supplement, as a justification, the theory of DROs. Okay, and uh, the, it's exactly this lack of being able to speak logically and in defense of such DRO problems, which is one point of contention. As for UPV, a caveat is not supplied by the author and makes the use of UPB suspect, as it is a codec. Uh, and by codec, I mean a codices or a code. Um, UPB is a codec in which the reader must decode and do so often publicly and haphazardly in front of a debating audience. Uh, so I've seen a few debates where this code is, is broken in front of uh, and at the uh, subsequent, uh, so, so to speak, the humiliation of those individuals who uh, you engage in the debate. Now, uh, UPV is first an acronym, which by itself is not an unfamiliar code in which long texts are collapsed into the first letter of each uh, metaphene or, or word. Uh, the introduction of acronyms exacts the contextual variations for which the signs of the acronym can be expanded. For example, note the contextual exactitude of USPS or UPS. Uh, and how the context leads the expansion of the acronym in our minds. I mean, you don't even need to think about what those acronyms mean. Uh, if the acronym is, 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 it's not even needed to be expanded at all. We already know what those are referring to. Now, Stefan embeds his lengthy tests as acronym, acronyms, and in doing so expects the casual reader to engage the text as a deeper and more encapsulating um, uh, engagement. Um, only after an engagement is given to the codec and the reader finds themselves within the center of this this context, which is Stefan's work. Stefan has many extremely lengthy books and over 240 YouTube episodes from which he rhetorically confounds and surrounds uh, the, the pithy tenets of his philosophy. On the periphery, the mere weight of words in which he directs the passerby to engage uh, is kind of like an event horizon. Uh, but later on, you'll find that it's simply just a, a labyrinth with logical snares and, and uh, 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 presumptive moral latitude. So uh, all he does with my videos is point back to his videos so that you can fall into his particular space, his particular spectrum of codice. Now, the, the, the other codec is found after the acronym uh, has been expanded. Uh, the universally preferable behavior, this expansion leads the reader to see in one moment a claim that there exists a behavior which is preferable, and not only preferable, but universally preferable. Now, this claim incites or elicits response from the newly acquainted individual as they think they have understood the grounds for the words used in the expanded acronym. 
universally preferable behavior. And it is here that the noob is treated to a semantic abuse by Stefan. As the claim of universally preferable behavior is in fact not a claim expressing comment, content, um, but it, it's a title for uh, it's a title for a circumscribed method of supposedly determining the validity of any proposed moral theory. And as this codec, uh, and, and as if this codec didn't disrespect the casual reader in the air of ignorance at this stage of engagement, Stefan furthers the codec with a description of the process of validating moral theory by stating that the validation process itself does not factor in behavior as an event at all but only includes behavior as a verb phrase to be used in a moral scenario description and it is from this scenario description the supposed method of universal moral validation is created or described so uh, there's an acronym when you find out the acronym universally preferable behavior uh, that behavior is uh, and that phrase by itself is not pointing to behavior at all, it's pointing to a methodology of validation of moral theory, which in, in the next respect uh, subdues the, the framework of, uh, of an independent uh, behavior. Uh, <clears throat> you find yourself, the noob walking into a discussion like this, finds themselves uh, a, a little bit, a little bit uh, off their, their footing. So either Stefan is uh, ignorant of the misnomer of his own convoluted codice as he simply uses this codec as a strategy to first contain the individual, uh, trip them, uh, and then debase them. And the reader immediately then, uh, and th this happens immediately when, when an individual enters into the dialogue with Stefan. Okay, so feel free to note some of his debating videos. He, he does this and then he kind of gets this like, goofy like wait 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 let me let me just be certain that that you're you're in my positioning as we discuss my particular author uh, my my particular text so let me let me just get this let me just get this crate and and he kind of steps you know he kind of puts on this particular air which is it's obscene okay um so uh in in either case stefan as he maintains this audacious posture uh, to supposed guests of his philosophy, uh, if his UPB could be more appropriately named, uh, he would have to rewrite years of labored texts. You know, if he if he changed the acronym to uh, method of validating uh, moral theories and made an acronym out of that and renamed it appropriately, that would be that would be substantially different. Uh, but he would have to go back and rewrite all of his books and start from scratch. So he's not going to do that, right? He has way too much invested. Um, but if, on the other hand, if UPB is but a pretext uh, or a method of universal moral validate, uh, validation, then the pretext itself, uh, as a strategic code, should be placed through the method of universal moral validation to see if we have abuse here uh, and coercion in the outset or, or, or whether or not it's just simple hypocrisy. That's the first note. 